Hi there, welcome to the Future Technologies Conference here in Vancouver, Canada. With me, Tamara Edmanski of the University of British Columbia. And she will be talking about their Master of Engineering um, Leadership. Their Master of Engineering Leadership. Tamara, first of all, about yourself. Could you do a short introduction? Sure. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Tamara Mansky. I am faculty, so I'm a professor at the University of British Columbia. Mm. I'm an engineer, and I uh, have a very interesting appointment where my position crosses engineering and the business school. Okay. So I guess I have the pleasure of teaching across both, and I also am the academic director of this new program that we've developed, the Master of Engineering Leadership degree. And could you tell me a bit about that program? Yep. It is a brand new professional master's program. So it's for people that are already in their career, mm -hmm. uh, much like an MBA. Uh, it is 40% business management and leadership classes and 60% technical. So it would be 60% of the classes are engineering, specific to a cl the clean energy industry or eight other specific industries. So we have eight sort of substreams of the degree. And wh why did the uni university start this program? Well, two reasons. There's an opportunity where people are looking to go back to university uh, once they're already in their career. Mm -hmm. um, we know already that many engineers go back to do an MBA um, because they're trying to become management or move up uh, the ladder in their company. And so we wanted to offer those engineers something else, something where they could get their skill set, uh, the business skill set, but also dive a bit deeper into graduate level um, technical courses that would be useful for them in their, pr in their work. Uh, the other reason um, is there there's an opportunity to target degrees specific to industries and not specific to uh, specialties. So traditionally you would do a master's in like mechanical engineering, something very specific and very mm -hmm. deep. You wouldn't do a master's degree in an entire industry like the clean energy industry or the integrated water management or software industry. And so we've tried to, we've tried to shift the way we think about higher education so for those two reasons that we've developed it. And in, in the end, what do you hope the impact will be of this, this program? Well, if you talk to industries about what their biggest risks are, some of the biggest risks that they, they foresee in their future, and that is the lack of talent, recruiting, lack, you know, recruiting finding people that have the right skills t for their specific industries. So we worked with industry to come up with these programs and we're hoping to fill those jobs and get students jobs that's the goal okay so and how are you doing so far so far so good we've just recruited our third year so we've st we're starting our third year in january uh -huh. 2018. Uh, we've grown incredibly fast much faster than uh, a program might normally uh, we've reached numbers akin to the MBA program that's on campus at University of British Columbia in three years when it took them, you know, 10 to do that. Um, so it's very successful. Uh, we're looking at between 70 and 80 percent of our graduates have jobs within the first six months of them graduating. So that's also very excellent numbers. So we're looking really good. We're really excited about it. If you then take a look back at the development stage of this program, um, what happened in this development stage to make this happen? Well, like anything in technology, it comes, it starts with a great idea and you have to spend a lot of time validating that idea, right? And so we did just that. We actually developed this much like a startup. In fact, very lean, very small teams, yeah. validating assumptions, going out and speaking to stakeholders, so potential customers, uh, people that might, you know, companies that might hire our students, also people that might consider being students, to kind of validate our assumptions along the way. And so we did many 
uh, stakeholder discussions. We held many stakeholder discussions and got a lot of feedback from industry into what is specifically the skills that they're looking for in these, this level of employee, a sort of mid-management um, uh, technical leader. Yeah. And then we just rolled with it, yeah. And, and now that the program is on track, uh, is there still uh, contact with the stakeholders? There is, yeah. We have advisory groups for every one of the specialties mm -hmm. that meet uh, twice a year, typically, maybe quarterly. Uh, we have a larger advisory group, and then we have s lots of stakeholders internally because they're multidisciplinary programs, right? So in one program, you might have mechanical engineering, civil engineering, um, the business school, forestry, community planning, you might have multiple faculties, so uh, like inputting into the content. So we meet with them as well. So internal stakeholders and external stakeholders regularly. If you look at uh, the core of this program, what makes it different than any other program? The combination between the combination of business skills and engineering or technical skills is very unique for a master's degree. Uh, but also the fact that we have looked at try trying to teach the student the value chain of that specific industry, sort of from start to finish, upstream and downstream, so they could have a broader understanding of their industry and be able to speak to specific uh, specific uh, fields or or issues that may come up that are not within their own group. So that's also really unique. Yeah. And how, how do students benefit from that unique approach? Well, when you speak to the graduates, they are most excited about typically the business skill set that they learn because they had been working in the field as a technical um, expert already. So they're using this degree to leverage to get a promotion or, you know, maybe they might have been working in a more traditional uh, industry like oil and gas as an engineer or something and they want to move to renewables mm -hmm. so now they're actually able to leverage that and make that transition so it's really life-changing for the students. It <laughs> sounds like a successful story. Mm -hmm. Are there any challenges left? Yeah of course there are. Uh, like with anything like with a startup uh, we always need to tweak things along the way. So we don't always have the balance of content right. So we're making changes from the curriculum perspective. But I'd say that, and, and we're sorting that out now that we're heading into our third year. I'd say our biggest challenge is brand recognition. Because we created a new degree that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, people wonder, well, what's an MEL? What does the L stand for? You know, how does, does that mean anything to anybody? And so generating that brand recognition is a really big challenge and something that we're trying to promote. And uh, how are you going to address that? Learning, well, doing peop learning people what the L stands for. <laughs> well, doing interviews like this. Um, but I'm happy to report that, in fact, other faculties on campus at the University of British Columbia have started, they've followed suit. There's another degree coming online in, in forestry, which is an entirely other um, discipline. They're looking at trying to do something. There's other programs that are trying to copy. And we always say the biggest compliment is when someone's trying to copy you. Yeah. So we're, we think that's a big compliment. And so we're happy that it's kind of getting some legs. Who knows? We just have to keep doing promotion and getting feedback and, and really making sure the industry partners remember and promote it themselves internally and to also their competition and their partners and supply chain and all that sort of thing. So, well, What are the future goals of MIL? Um, the future goals are to grow the program. We are still looking to expand and to continue to find industry partners. So companies that want to send maybe some of their employees to us or just that might have input, you know, might ha have a stake in the game and say, you know what, you're not quite, you don't quite have it right, let us tell you what we need. So, yeah. This conference is called uh, the Future Technologies Conference. Mm -hmm. Where do you see technology taking us in 10 years time? That's a really interesting question. Because my world is education, I think a lot about how technology will affect education. And it's definitely, technology is definitely going to influence teaching and learning practice. It's going to change the way professors teach. It's, we don't know, but 
education, especially higher education, is ripe for disruption. And so we're kind of waiting for that big thing to happen. And I don't know if it's going to be online learning. I think it might be something even more amazing. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the day that grading papers is automated. So if somebody can work on nat natural language processing and get to the point where that can happen, that would be a huge success in my personal world. But okay. yeah, I think it's going to change. Uh, technology is going to change education, both in teaching learning, but also hands down, everyone always talks about job loss. So uh, from a very high level perspective, we're going to have to change what we're teaching students. The jobs are going to change, so the degrees will need to change, and the universities will have to be more nimble and be able to train people in a different way for different skill sets. So in 10 years, I think that my job will be very different than it is now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.